Herzlich willkommen zurück aus der Pause. Hello, welcome back from the break to the public sector track. Let me open it with Kurt Garloff. I'm very happy um, to do so. Head of um, Public Cloud Stack. You spent your life with open source projects, promoting the democratization of important technologies. Well, do we really need cloud distribution anymore? Who is this SCS and if so, how many? Well, Adriana, I hope you can hear me. I can't really hear you right now, but we can hear you. Right, okay, thank you very much for the introduction. Let's get started. Well, I had asked you, what is SCS? And maybe you can uh, tell us what's its relationship to Gaia-X, and maybe say what Gaia-X is, if somebody still doesn't know. Well, Gaia-X, let's get started with that. Um, I think we have a good label here in, uh, we have a good life in Europe. We do well. Economically, um, we love living in a free system, and we have this revolution via digitization uh, right now, and we're not at the forefront here in Europe oftentimes, and we really have to make an effort to be able at the forefront um, in the future. We really have to worry because a lot of um, value added is accumulated in a business these days by collecting data, analyzing data, compiling data, and then using it for uh, added, uh, added value. Somebody uh, poignantly uh, said that data is the oil of the 21st century, and we have to make sure that we're at the forefront here, so we're not economically sidelined. At the same time, we have this free system where we protect uh, the freedom of citizens by taking data protection seriously um, because we don't want uh, somebody looking over our shoulders in terms of our data all the time. And there are different regions in the world that have an entirely different approach here. And I think it's worthwhile defending what we have. And this is where Gaia-X uh, comes into play. Uh, Gaia-X says we need digital ecosystems, we need data, but the data needs infrastructure in order to process them, to store them, and we have to make sure that we have our own technologies, our own providers, so we can control this, uh, these systems, and we're not subject to the control of um, third parties who may be operating under different legal systems, may have different values um, and different approaches to data production, uh, protection, among other things. And that is a problem that Gaia-X is supposed to solve. And um, I would like to show you an image to exemplify this. Thank you very much. That's the image for Gaia-X. The X in the upper half is to symbolize that the data can be made available by users, but can be still under uh, their own control. And the lower part indicates the infrastructure that supports the technology uh, required for this. And this is where smart technology comes into play. It's the easiest to have control if uh, the, the technology is open source, and that's why we're building an open source platform, making it possible to make such um, infrastructures available. All right, thank you very much for this image. It was easy to see that uh, everything basically is based on uh, the a sovereign cloud stack, and the, the tree was almost like an X. That's a very helpful visualization of your explanation. Thank you very much for that. Uh, may you, uh, can you maybe indicate to us what problems SCS addresses and why it's important that it, it should be available? You just explained what it is. Maybe uh, you can specifically uh, answer this question. What's the purpose? 
Well, the ecosystems for the infrastructure don't give rise to themselves. Uh, it's good if you have a uh, demand um, for infrastructure suppliers, but there's a lot of um, technology available or good open source technology. Nevertheless, in Europe, um, a uh, platform has not emerged that many users can fall back on where users can say, I use these suppliers and I can shift easily enough. Uh, it's also due to the uh, fact, among other things, that all the suppliers have uh, defined their own approach to such a platform, what they want this uh, platform to look like. Even though many use similar open source uh, technology, nobody can uh, is open for the platform uh, of the others. So if you write an application for one platform, it won't run on the other. Or if you use one uh, infrastructure and one platform, you want to migrate to another, it's difficult. And that's, of course, is discouraging. And so it's easier to be with a, a large hyperscaler uh, who offer the same uh, solutions everywhere. And we need to solve this problem. We need to define standards of how to solve this problem. And we talk to a lot of suppliers uh, to determine what are the best approaches. How can we best um, agree on one thing and um, we will then make it available as an open source software so that everybody can use that and the ecosystem can grow, new suppliers can um, dock, on, um, dock into this. A second topic that is often underestimated is uh, that it's anything but easy to uh, operate such a highly diversified um, infrastructure. You need a good team who are knowledgeable, who uh, have the knowledge and accumulate experience. And uh, the experience is that uh, open s uh, source technology is available, but the knowledge of how it can be used is more difficult to find. So we would like to uh, cooperate with the suppliers to collect experience um, and share it with um, different suppliers. So of course, all these suppliers compete with each other. But let's face it, the big competitors are not the European um, suppliers who want to build a small little platform, but it's the big uh, companies from overseas. Well, the next question, could that be summarized as it's mostly a question of pooling our resources and creating interoperability? Yes, those are important aspects, of course, because the next question, yes, is how is Europe or Gaia-X um, hoping to uh, live up against uh, the hyperscalers with SCS? So, you have the plan here, uh, but is it realistic? Are there um, any other uh, challenges that you um, that you haven't mentioned yet, or is there any uh, certain aspect that uh, you would like to underscore? Well, yes, I, I think you shouldn't underestimate what open source communities can uh, do. I started many years ago to work on Linux, and I uh, cooperated in this, and nobody ever thought that. Uh, a number of crazy hackers would cooperate and actually come up with something um, with a, an operating system that actually can take on um, a big guy like Hi uh, Microsoft. And of course, you can repeat this su success story, bringing companies together, bringing individual suppliers together who can jointly cooperate on something. Then you really have a lot of good collaborators who can make a contribution to making it work. And it also, uh, there is a lot of uh, pressure to act. Those who want to use uh, cloud services often have good offerings from the hyperscalers, but they're not ideal for many uh, reasons. You might not be economically dependent uh, from one supplier, from one company, if you are, which you are if you use one hyperscaler. Or you might not want to give you, uh, share your data and, and give some of your um, sales revenue to um, a platform like Amazon if you're competing with them. Oftentimes, you have legal challenges as well that you can't really uh, 
use platforms because they um, uh, don't treat data uh, the way it is legally required um, for you, for individual companies in Europe. And then it might not be possible to cooperate with one of those hyperscalers. So there are many reasons why um, the offerings by the hyperscalers is, uh, won't fit. And that's certainly one of the niches that we can cater to. Well, I would have liked to speak more about your biography at the beginning, but um, we would still be talking about it, I believe, um, if we had. But you said you're um, in close contact with the community, and I find it interesting to say that this is a project where a lot of small companies are involved, no matter what small their, how small their contribution. So it's a very wide project with a very wide base. And maybe uh, is that the approach you need in order to break um, the, uh, the power of the big players, um, which is also relies on um, people's habits. Um, and um, so it's difficult to move away from them, even if you want to. Yeah, that's definitely the case. Once you've opted for a platform and the platforms are the hyperscalers as such that they have a wide bouquet of services that they make available, a smorgasbord of, of services, and um, if you use them all, then uh, you're really trapped in this ecosystem. That is certainly a problem, and we need to um, try to uh, make alternatives available uh, to customers. Uh, the beauty of it is that if you have a large number of people with different people in the community who can uh, cater to individual niches uh, that they build their own solutions for, then you can cater to a wide set of needs. But we don't have to do it all. It's the ecosystem. It's a community that does it. Where uh, is SCS at this point in time, and what are the next steps that are planned? Well, we've had the good luck of um, having worked on um, this. We uh, had an, uh, another project by Leap Innovation. That was a small team of through people, but there is already a community around it um, that has done a lot of work. Uh, so we're cooperating with a lot of uh, companies already. I can show it uh, later on which companies are supporting us, which individual uh, member uh, people supporters uh, because they're interested or because their company is interested in it. We started with the software stack customers. We uh, started with uh, uh, democratization of um, uh, storage uh, units. Um, we uh, built a, an infrastructure uh, base for it. And we're now uh, intensively working on containers, uh, defining the containers, which uh, we have Kubernetes, which is a, a well-defined uh, system, but you need to um, standardize, um, create standards. Um, you need to have more automation. Otherwise, it's not useful for a cloud. And this is where we're working um, intensively, where we have uh, some results already. And what we're always working on is to create a structure, an infrastructure where we can actually test these things uh, for integration uh, capabilities so that we can be sure that if we change things, nothing is destroyed. So that is uh, something that will uh, keep accompanying our um, entire project. So uh, your m hand movement was probably uh, indicating that this is really at the uh, bottom. Would you like to show the website? Um, then I'll um, uh, ask another uh, my next question. No, let's leave that to the end. OK, then the next question would be, can I try this out? And if so, how? I mean, the things you have already. Yes, you can try it. At the end, when you want to use a sovereign cloud stack, you need to have a few servers that you can install it on. Of course, that is nothing that uh, somebody can do at home. 
We have two partners who have it in a productive uh, operation. That's the Cloud Plus servers. Um, um, what one can also do, what we did for our own development and uh, for people who want to try it out, you can install it virtually, our cloud stack. So you use the access for an existing open, uh, an existing access to an open cloud stack, and then you put the virtual um, uh, open stack uh, on it. Um, so you have two open stacks uh, on top of each other, and it's nothing you want to use for uh, operative uh, purposes. But we use it on a daily basis for testing. And it's, of course, imp uh, possible. We did it with Terraform to do it on a single uh, server. You could even do it on an Amazon, on top of an Amazon server. We haven't done it yet. Um, but if you want to try it, yes, uh, contact us. We can do it together. It's possible. Um, in terms of uh, the logical approach, it's no problem. Um, it's a good approach if you're a person who wants to actually touch things um, to get to know them. Then it's something that I could um, recommend. We have good documentation on this. Um, I also wrote an article recently that describes how um, to do this. And we're happy to help, of course. So that was an invitation for all uh, listeners. And I can understand this. If you try it out, you understand it at a different level. Even if you understand it from a pure descriptive point of view, but it, it, it's helpful to actually do it. What if I don't only want to test it, but also if I want to get involved in development? Um, can I get involved in SCS? It's possible. We actually um, would welcome it very much. We wish um, that this happen. Uh, we're growing on a weekly basis, and we hope that people join us. But I think, indeed, that um, um, trying it out is an, a useful first step for anybody who would like to uh, work with this. And um, of course, the code is public. It's on GitHub. You could uh, make suggestions of what we could improve. Um, and um, you could open up issues there. That's what the, we call it there. And um, we could then take a look at any suggestions you might make. So that's a normal collaboration that um, would be normal for open source communities that uh, have their code on GitHub. And of course, there will be people. Uh, I love this so much. I would like to get involved on a permanent basis. And I'd say, send us a mail, and then we could um, get to know each other, and then just get involved. So we have weekly meetings for coordination. So we have uh, Scrum-like uh, agile development method where we get together on a weekly basis to coordinate the uh, topics we're working on. And um, we're always happy uh, about anybody who joins us. For anyone who would like to um, join us in a more intensive way even, maybe I'll show the website now. That's it. That's the one. We have a lot of companies that are uh, cooperating with us. You can see the logos on our website, on the web on the left side. Most of them are looking for staff. I know that. So that's a possibility of uh, contacting them uh, to see, can I get involved with you and working on a project, uh, on a cloud stack uh, project. And we have our own uh, openings. Uh, the team, our team is growing. We had the great luck of um, having um, secured, not, not quite secured, but we're close to securing subsidies from the Federal Ministry of um, Economics. And so we can uh, keep growing our team. So there are a handful of uh, jobs that uh, we need to fill um, in order to promote this project. 
I'd be happy to to get uh, applications. Well, I um, mentioned earlier that um, digital sovereignty is a buzzword that is becoming more and more popular, that there is more uh, articles and Gaia X is being mentioned increasingly. Can you feel that more people from the community uh, say, oh, I look at it, I might get involved, more partners, or um, have the people who are interested always been interested in this, or is it too uh, in a too short a period of time to uh, see this. No, I, I would share your observation. If we speak to companies um, that say um, that's an interesting project, then we uh, tend to uh, preach to the converted. Um, the infrastructure platforms that you can do this uh, or that you can use for this. Um, that there is a lot of pain uh, involved in being dependent on American or Chinese suppliers. And the prospect of having more independence is something that many welcome, and I think that is even promoted by the public uh, discussion now. And so uh, there are uh, newcomers, new participants all the time who are joining us in this effort. And this is really a beautiful thing to see because it's an important topic to work on. Yes, I agree because if even though it's a, uh, even if a topic is important and right, uh, you have to um, address it at the right time in order to, uh, for it to get a bit of impetus, a bit of um, um, build up a bit of um, steam. Um, let me take a look at whether uh, we've gotten any questions here. We have a little bit of time left. Um, there are two that seem to be uh, quite popular. Um, I would like to ask, what is the added value of SCS compared to OpenStack? Well, we use OpenStack, so that uh, is a very pertinent question, of course. But if you take a look at what we build, then maybe uh, it becomes clear. Um, open stack is only 20% of our, our uh, software. So you need to have test automation. You need to have the monitoring tools. Uh, the lifecycle management needs to be handled. The container platform that needs to be built on top of that, that's not part of open stack. And to bring all of this uh, together and make it a coherent system, which uh, can be offered in a com um, compatible and standardized way, um, that is something that doesn't happen itself to build a standard out of that that uh, everybody can accept and that uh, you can rely on. To build such a system is something that needs to be promoted actively. I'm torn back and forth. Um, to ask you uh, more questions because we only have one minute left because the question that I would like to ask you, will you go to a breakout room? Will people be able to um, ask you any questions or don't you have any um, time for this now? No, I'm, I'm easy to find anyway. Um, but the most important uh, thing uh, on such a conference, in such a conference, is the direct discussion. So I will be available in a breakout room. Okay, there were no more questions. Why were Amazon and Microsoft taken on board as members? And I think that's something we need to discuss at greater length. And the question, are there any resources at the state and federal level that uh, plan to uh, use uh, SCS? So that goes into more, more specific uh, specifics and detail. So that would be something um, that people who go to the breakout sessions um, might want to pursue with you. Yeah, that's breakout stage one, I think, right? OK, I'll, I'll go there. OK, I would have loved to talk to you at greater length. Thank you very much. That was very interesting, uh, informative, and it was great, uh, a great pleasure to talk to you. So maybe we get back together the next time around. Yeah, well, hopefully uh, in person. I, I hate the fact that we can't see anyone anymore. All right. Yes, it was great to see you. Thank you very much. I hope it was good for everybody else as well. Okay, thank you very much. Goodbye.